So obviously not in my office today, coming from an Airbnb in Miami, where I'm on a family trip, because when you have four kids and a very pregnant wife, you do not go on family vacations, you go on family trips. <laughs> I'd like to talk about a topic today that came up, which is showing some much needed appreciation for spreadsheets. Obviously, I think it's something that's very underappreciated and take it for granted these days for how awesome they truly are. They take the average person, the average show, and make them to basically become super producers or super outputters. Talking about spreadsheets, it's basically an arrangement of rows and columns. This is what you would call an analog spreadsheet. For a very long time, this is how people kept their books, right? Manually, rows and columns of information and data transcribed by hand. This changed in 1970, and you can see here the, la the latest patent on this item in 1983, which is the LANPAR system. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, what about 1963, when the business computer language, the BCL, was poured into an IBM 740 by R. Brian Walsh at Marquette University from Wisconsin? And I would say, well, these batch spreadsheets largely dealt with addition or subtraction of entire columns or rows, which were the input variables, rather than the individual cells, which we're gonna be talking about. So students could take this information that was prepared by, by a professor and manipulate it to show ratios, but we're not talking about the major leap forward, which was not 1963, but 1970 with the LANPAR system. Now, why is it called the LANPAR system? Well, you'll look here at the top, we have Remy Lan, Dow, one of the co-inventors, as well as Rene Pardo, so Lan Par. There's also a second layer of this cleverness, and it's called the uh, Lan Par system for the language of programming arrays at random. Language programming arrays at random. So I just want to read this out quick. So this is a process, an apparatus, a compiler program carried out in a digital computer for conveying a source of information program converting a source program into an object program. The source program is entered into first storage area of the computer. The symbolic source program is preferably first codified into a computer executable code by the compiler program. This is where it gets interesting. The compiler program then examines each formula to determine whether it has been defined. If the first formula has been defined, it is removed from the first storage area and placed in the second storage area and marked as being defined. If the first formula examined has not been defined, it is retained in the first storage area. The compiler program then repeats this process for each formula in the first storage area. It then goes on to further explain this out. So this is a pretty big change. However, this is not the, the biggest change, which I would say was VisiCalc. And so this is now 1979. So we're going forward a little bit too. People will remember this in the Apple II program, but this is what's referred to as forward referencing or natural order calculation. So this is not only a new idea of how you use a computer, but it's a new way, I would say, of thinking about the world. This is where conventional programming, you know, you think about it in a sequence of steps. This is not sequential. This is when you make a change in one place and all the other items change instantaneously and automatically. It's something we're all used to today. We take it for granted, but it really was a groundbreaking concept in that time. So if you're before 1979, this is not the paradigm or the thought process you'd be thinking about the world in. Who is this? I know what you're thinking. Oh, this is Mitch Kapoor from 1983. He was a friend of the VisiCalc guys, really brought forward Lotus 1-2-3, right, which is on the DOS system and became the leading spreadsheet during the DOS domination era, all the way up to 1983. This had a little bit of GUI into it. And uh, but was pretty short lived because in 1985 we had the major GUI upgrade, which was Excel. Really completely took over, arguably by 1995. It had a pretty strong dominance in 1985, the Windows platform, and then eventually assembling into the full on, full on suite. So that's a little bit of the history of it. I would say the big, big thing I wanted to convey was what a leap forward forward referencing natural order calculations were, where you could change one cell and everything else would instantaneously update. I'll just briefly talk on you know, web-based spreadsheets. So G Sheets is probably one of the most popular ones. Uh, Airtable, Smartsheets being more of the blur between the software. 
So you kind of say in 1999, AJAX being introduced, really, really getting strong use in 2005. So AJAX is short for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Essentially what it means is that you can receive data and send data from the server in the background or asynchronously. Uh, so by decoupling the data interchange layer from the presentation layer, it allows web pages and by extension, these web applications to change the content dynamically without needing to reload the entire page. Again, conceptually, something we take for granted, Google Spreadsheets, you update something, everything else changes automatically without having to do a refresh of your web page, but pr pretty novel technology, pretty novel uh, ability. So this is a picture of all the accountants and levels of, of workers that were now unemployed because you're able to scale up, really increase the productivity of a single person uh, using this new, new tool. This is just how impactful Excel is now on the entire economy. This is a meme because spreadsheets have really dumbed down the math needs to do pretty, pretty important things or pretty powerful things. And uh, this is a meme of a dog, has his glasses on, and he's saying that we cannot afford a cat. If you have any questions on this, uh, put them down at the bottom. This is, uh, I hope to dovetail off of this video talking about generative pre-trained transformer uh, through a chat interface, or also known as chat GPT. That is kind of the next evolution of business iteration, the way that the Excel drastically changed the way that business is done. Chat GPT now takes that to the new level. For a long time, I learned, I heard the first one about 10 years ago, ideas are cheap, execution is everything. Execution just keeps keep getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And with the advent of AI becoming more mainstream, it may be the ideas that actually become the value-based ad. So that's all I have for now. Hopefully you found this entertaining, enjoyable. Subscribe. If you have anything mean to say, send that to my Twitter.